Let me let me go back. Uh, wait for a. I'm gonna actually uh, boost my survival stats, unfortunately, uh, because I will be dying here otherwise. I need to boost it three. There we go. That should be just enough, I think. Wait for a better moment. Continue. And I'm gonna continue again. And yes, I still have one life left. I will read this. All goes dark. You awaken to a thick fog all around. Under your feet is marble floor. You can't tell if you're indoors or not. The light here is strange and seems to come from a come from the fog itself, which glows white. That is weird. Where am I? You ask. The fog clears ahead of you, creating an open area, and out of the mist steps Kriya, her face hard and serious, but she is naked. Ugh. It's all you manage at first. She has a beautiful body. Kriya stepping out of a fog naked? There's no way this is actually happening in your world. Oh gods, am I dead? Uh, I am dead, aren't I? You whisper. She smiles and you do your best to keep your eyes on her face. No champion. I have protected you from that fate, uh, she says in Egra's voice. Oh, that's Kriya. She's using Kriya's body. I mean, you could have actually taken someone else's body. I, even with her, I, I just don't. It just doesn't feel right with her. Yeah. As a beautiful body. I mean, if they actually have a sex scene with Kriya, I will go forward with it because, you know, content. Other than that, I'd rather not. I'd rather not. Okay. No champion, I protected you from that fate, she, uh, she, says, she says in Egra's voice. Hawk certainly wanted you dead, however, even if he dares uh, not reach too far into the material plane, for fear of inciting the wrath of the other gods, Egra, you say. She nods grinning. You like the meat shell I picked? Uh, you ask. Uh, she asks as she runs her hand slightly over her hips. Or you are pretending to be Egra, you say. I've taught you well, champion, she says with a laugh. Well, Egra, I do not care for the meat shell you picked. Oh. She says, uh, holding her pinky to her lips in mock surprise. Perhaps this then. Her breasts engorge while staying impossibly perky. <laughs> you stare. <laughs> she laughs. Even that stupid goblin whose face was face mash and knew what would catch your attention. Remember him? <laughs> oh, I do remember him. Uh, reminding yourself that this isn't real, you tear, uh, tear your eyes from her chest and fix on her face. The former champion, yes, I remember, you say. You tried to trick me with, well, essentially with those, <laughs> you say, allowing your eyes to flick to her breast and then back to her face. I wager he nearly added your skull to his tribe's altar that day, she says with a stern look on her face. <laughs> Despite your weakness, you're proven to be a better champion than the others, at least so far. In answer to your question, no, I still don't like it. With Kriya's face and your voice, I find it disturbing. Not sure if you're in a dream or a nightmare, she smiles. Well, you ought to know by now that my father enjoys the space in between. Speaking of, where am I? You ask, safe. The Zegra flicking her fingers dismissively. Your body's alive, a bit banged up, but yet, uh, but yet still breathing. A brilliant outcome considering Thog took a run at you uh, after you slew his son. Oh, Thog actually came down to the material plane to kill me? Holy shit. <laughs> that must be awesome. Uh, I mean, not awesome. <laughs> uh, now your mind is in a dream. Uh, feel free to thank me. You're supposed to be obliterated. Your soul actually annihilated. Hog's punishment is to annihilate your soul, you say? Uh, she nods. His reward too. You may have noticed his thralls were keen to have their sweet oblivion. So they're, they're like following a really bloody and gory version of uh, Buddhism, I'm guessing. Because uh, Buddhism, there's also a thing of like... What is it called? Um... Uh, samsara or something like that uh, where um, it's, essentially what they say is that uh, all people are stuck in a wheel of reincarnation and to exit that wheel and be one with the universe is the end goal of what you know one should strive for so I guess it's like a bloody version of Buddhism a really bloody version um, his servants he, his, he rewards servants with oblivion you say Spend a moment as a servant and you will beg for it too, says Egra. Uh, okay. Indeed, you remember the incapacitating doom you felt back in the Alethian temple when you first encountered the monster. You suspect that was only a taste. Anyway, shielding you from that fate was the least my father could do. You helped destroy the spawn of a rival god, rather loathsome godling, I might add. I've gone my whole life never hearing of godlings, not even the bard's tales. And yet in the space of a few days I have met two. This is no coincidence. No, says Egra, bouncing from foot to foot, her enormous breasts bouncing along with her. 
The game has started. Please put some clothes on, you say. I cannot concentrate on your words with all the movement. Egra rolls her eyes and a purple dress materializes. The same one Kriya has been wearing lately. Um, okay. I really do. I mean, even Kriya is not that hot. I don't know. I mean, we did see one photo of her. She just looks like a normal tavern bench. And we know that she has a really shitty personality. So, yeah, I am not so sure. Big breast certainly helps, though. Um... Um, not on Korea. Korea does not have that big of a breast, uh, but uh, Egra have made sure that uh, this situation is otherwise. What game you say? Uh, you have heard of Nerul? Uh, why is Nerul here? What are you talking about? Nerul is dead. Uh, you have heard of Nerul? Uh, she says, the goddess of undead. You say the rumor says she was destroyed. The rumors are true. Egra says, cla clasping her hands together, and with her destruction, there is a new chair at the table of gods. It has been decreed that there shall be a competition. Each of the major gods will offer a child to be sent to the material plane. You wait for her to say more, but she just grins at you. And then, you prompt, do all the godlings fight to the death or something? Uh, the objective uh, becomes blurry from there. However, eliminating rival godlings is certainly a step in the right direction. This is Egra. Oh, so Egra wants to become the new god. She wants to become a separate god from her father because she's also a godling. Fucking hell, that's ridiculous. Now it makes sense that she's here. That's why I was wondering this entire time. Why, why did her father allow her to come down to the material plane? And if she's here, why is she stuck in a, you know, a, you know, a necklace or whatever? Now it makes sense that uh, she is one of the godlings trying to become the new god. Okay. However, eliminating... Yeah, yeah. So that is why you call me a champion. I'm a champion in a game, you say. The grandest of games, says Egra, giving your hands to the heaven. I, well, I enjoy gambling, but this is rather high stakes, you say. She laughs. You enjoy cheating, not gambling. <laughs> I think that makes you and I a good match. Perhaps we do. Yet you just told me that how I narrowly escaped oblivion in a game of vengeful gods. I wager there are worse fates yet. Yes, there are much worse fates, but my father chooses favorites on occasion, and those friends he has, he protects and rewards. Uh, there are things better than mere pleasure, champion, uh, she says, caressing her body. Pleasure is a fine thing for a while, but it becomes dull. I offer bliss, which isn't a life without struggle. Uh, imagine living every day with boundless excitement and a sense of discovery. The multiverse is a vast place, even for my father. That is true. They did explain the whole situation with the multiverse in the first game, which is... Just insanely huge and I feel like there's going to be loads of lore dump and a lot of things that we missed out on. I'm amazed they're actually not talking about our character from the first game considering we did kill, um, what was the name? Nerul as the wizard man. I came to the city with only the hope of paying off those who threatened my sister and maybe uh, finding some pleasure you speak of, maybe a few extra coins to keep my wine glass and plate full. I don't need to get mixed up in this. You already are. That old witch Kalak told you the same. As a man of fortune, I say it's time- But she didn't say anything about this. She said that she does not want to, uh, want to, you know, participate in the gods thing. And they don't- she doesn't want to get noticed by the gods or whatever. She was just being fearful, um, uh, with- rightfully so. Uh, I don't think she said anything about me. As a man of fortune, I say it's time to push all your coins into the center of the table and play the game. But rig it, but rig it as best as we can. You say with a slow grin. That is why I chose you, says Egra. Narrow your eyes. You choose a mortal champion. Yet Thog's godling had no mortal host. Uh, Egra raises her eyebrows, and you saw how that turned out, didn't you? He smiles. Not using a mortal shell has its advantages. Yes, that thing was a true monster, and given a few soul, a few days of feeding on souls, it would have become a titan. But a mortal host has advantages too. By me inhibiting your body, I'm better able to hide from the other gods. On top of that, she also, if I die, uh, she can just move on to another champion. So it's like infinite champions until unless she gets caught and killed. Um, as a trickster, I can see how that would be important to you, you say. No doubt this is also why your father had been so stingy with his favor. He does not wish to attract attention. She shrugs. I believe I've said as much. I uh, believe I've said as much. Always do more with less if you can. The outward power you have used uh, is modest. No more than a mid-level priest of another god. Holy shit, all that power of transmogrification and like blasting shit to pieces and shit like that all the insanity I have displayed that's that's the equivalent of a mid-level priest 
even that guy that got his face sucked who was like a high priest could easily body me well yes anyone can easily body me but that's not what i'm saying he's, his powers are even greater fucking hell that's ridiculous i was always been able to do more with less you say she smiles glancing down at your groan then back up again Oh, really? Really? Even now? Even now you're bullshitting me? I know now for a fact that a Rooster has a fucking fat ass cock. Alright, no need for all these games. I can already tell that these tricks are not going to work. I definitely have a big cock in this fucking world. Rooster definitely has a big one. Um, she smiles glancing down at you groan in the backup again. That's not what I mean, you say. She laughs. You know, fear, obviously. I've seen it. And you're easily within the normal range. Maybe better than most. Maybe, you say? Uh, you, uh, you say? Like out of the hundreds of men, where would I stand? Like out of a hundred men, where would I stand? She laughs more heartily. The child of a god stands before you. And this is what you ask. She laughs again. Besides, she says when she settled down, what, uh, what is a body anyway? Temporary and forgotten soon enough, particularly by mortals. You and I keep our thoughts on more weighty concerns. So you and I are a team now in this game, you say. No more tormenting me and sometimes trying to get me killed. Oh, she says, her eyes going up. Goodbye. <laughs> she just fucking runs. That's hilarious. And the negro disappears. Well, that's not a very encouraging answer, you mutter, as you look around the foggy room. The fog, fog closes in and soon all you see is shimmering white. You're not sure how long you remain here. Your thoughts drift to happy days spent in the alley behind your loft, uh, behind your loft back in Windborne. Not a bad way to spend your time drifting in the fog. When you awaken, the first thing you see is Avis's smiling face. The hero awakens, she says. You take a deep breath. I could get used to that name. <laughs> Are you sure I deserve it? You try to wince. Uh, you try to smile, but it becomes a wince of pain. Your side hurts. Indeed, pretty much your entire body hurts. Running off again and again to battle that abomination alone. Alethea bless you. You would make a good paladin, she frowns. Not that I condone such behavior. You, sh you should have allowed others to aid you. Uh, you're in a bed, a uh, bed of fine linens, a few blood-soaked -so rags on, a, on an intricately carved table beside you. Okay, so I'm getting some royal treatment out here, but okay. So this is what being a hero feels like, you say with a smile. I would have expected less of a headache. The pain will pass. The Thogian's crouch tried to cast a hate a curse on you in his final hateful moments on this earth. Tried, you say? His taint was on you. It's fortunate your magic user friend found you so quickly so we could help you. Kriya found me first, you say? Avis nods. My, pre my mistress, high priestess, Bailat, and the druids, Quith, Kulathas? Restored blessings on you. Uh, the blessings were granted easily. I believe all gods that you were prayed to, including Alethea, Sath, and Deera were happy to give you their favor. Druid, you whisper to yourself, looking around the room for any grimy bark-eating priest. <laughs> uh, but then your breath catches uh, in your throat as you behold a semi-transparent boy hovering above the floor in the corner. Before your eyes, he swiftly morphs into an adolescent... Uh, then a young man, middle-aged, old, and wrinkled with wisps of hair, and then back to a baby, starting the cycle again. In your <laughs> that is an absurd species, I will have to say. I'm guessing that's an illusion. Uh, or maybe not, who knows. In your peripheral vision, you see Avis reaching over, then you feel her hand on your shoulder. Do not fear, I think he wants to thank you. Who? What? You stammer. Uh, you have always feared ghosts. Every city has them, and you have seen a few yourself. But on th those occasions, you're, you were able to run away. This time, you feel like your insides might rip out if you run. Besides, you don't want to act cowardly in front of Avis, particularly if she's going to be calling you hero. Take a deep breath. Who is he? You say, trying to keep your voice even. I, I Priestess Bielad, thanks. This is the spirit of Lady Wellington's child, uh, the child she was going to have. The Thogian scum has had trapped his soul. Oh, that's the kid. I thought that was a priest or something. That's the kid. He's just like in a continuous cycle of growing old and shit. Um, uh, Thog I thought he would eat his soul. For some reason, he didn't. I trapped his soul along with others. When you slew the monster, the souls were released. Right, right, right. What are the others, you say? Not that you want a troop of ghosts in the room, thankful to you or not. They've gone to their next world, says Avis. High Priestess Bailat attempted to send this one off too. However, she believes the path of the bloodborne ceremony has bound him here. You must have your courage and smile at the spirit and wave. You're very welcome, you say. He smiles back, first as a baby, then as a toddler, on and on. Finally, you tear your voice, eyes off the spirit and regard Avis. So, what is it? Uh, what is to become of him? Will he wander this world as a ghost? I hope not. High Priestess Bailat believes 
Uh, he shall s soon infuse his spirit with another body, like possess someone? You say, no. He says, putting her hand over your mouth to suppress a laugh. Over her mouth to suppress a no. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why she said it like that. Suppress a laugh. No, he will oblige himself to another, um, shall we say, union between man and woman, a body yet to be claimed. So maybe tonight someone, <laughs> your sentence trails off. You always make some finger gestures to uh, pantomime the act of married love making but decide not to. <laughs> we essentially tried to do the, the, the circle hand like okay symbol with one hand and then took our index finger and put it through that shit to signify that someone's gonna be fucking but I guess we decided not to. It's a good idea. Uh, it would be an auspicious day for that, yes, uh, says Avis, some color rising to her cheeks. What do you think, Agra? Should I suggest to our Alethian friend that we have, we make a new home for this boy here on this bed? <laughs> oh, that's a good one, that's a good one. Uh, take every chance you can get. It seems only fair that since I freed the boy, I ought to see to his welfare. Is that something a hero would do? <laughs> that is hilarious. Uh, no answer, it's just a joke. Of course, you would never say that to an Alethian priestess, at least not until you have gotten to know her better. So Agra ought to enjoy this line of thought. Oh, you're hiding from the Alethian? Uh, did you hear what she said? Uh, they think they saved me from the curse, uh, Th Thog's curse, not you. I imagine I'm a pretty big target now that I'm a hero. Still nothing, not even a tinge of Egra. You put your hand on your chest, feeling for your amulet. It's gone. Holy shit, boy. Someone took the amulet off. Someone took the amulet off. Egra is gone, literally. Now, she didn't mention her being gone. I'm guessing while I was in the fog alone, someone took it off. While healing my wounds or whatever. I wonder what they would think of me uh, when I ask for the, the, you know, the amulet back and they're like, why the hell do you, why were you even wearing that? But okay, uh, she just asked for this volume, let's see. Uh, 380, oh wow, I did absolute shit in this chapter. This is the first time I think in like both of the games, uh, Wizard's Choice and Rogue's Choice, that the first time I've gotten Survivor with nice teeth. Uh, in Wizard Choice, I don't think I ever gotten below cunning, like whatever the second achievement is. In this one, I got the third achievement and now I've gotten the fourth achievement. Survivor with nice teeth, amazing. Holy shit. I came down very low, 380? I'm not even close to being a rogue. Fucking hell. Anyway, uh, thank you so much for watching. Um, I'm going to be moving on to the best choices of this chapter next. After that, we'll move on to chapter. 12. I'm trying to get to the latest chapter as quickly as possible because I've got plenty of uh, you know, reading type of games, interactive games that I've uh, found and I'm going to be reading all of them. Uh, so yeah, see you guys in a bit. Uh, share the video. Bye bye.